Today's project is going to be testing Paul Sellers' saw sharpening uh, video. So here I have a saw that I bought in the local African market. It is a Peugeot made in France. Not at all dubious. Uh, <laughs> so it's a, let's see how long is this guy? I've got, he is 81 centimeters long and it's a four, a four teeth per inch saw. So a pretty rough rip saw. It, uh, I, it's been lightly used and it's never been sharpened. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a 20 centimeter rip cut and this wood we have here, which is called jala, it's a, a West African mahogany kind of wood. It's pretty dense and has a pretty rough grain to work with. So I'll time and see how long it takes me to cut, to rip cut 20 centimeters of this jala wood, which is roughly six centimeters, uh, six centimeters thick, that's what matters. So it's six centimeter thick uh, jala wood that I'll be ripping through. And then I'll sharp, sharpen up the saw the way Paul Sellers tells us to and see how much that improves my the time and effort in my cutting. Alright, so let's see what we can do here. I've already started a cut so that it'll be fair with my second cut since it'll all already have a, a start. I'm not trying to get this cut started. So here we go, seeing how long it takes to rip 20 centimeters of jala West African Redwood. So Paul Sellers talks about the importance of dropping your hand to follow your gauge line. I don't have there aren't any sides of this that are that were square. I have no reference face. It's just cut with a handheld chainsaw. So uh, I just used a straight edge, and then it'll it will become my reference face. that does it. I'll post the time below once we calculate that all out. Whew. Got plenty of sweat going here. Okay, so we did our first 20 centimeters of, of ripping through that uh, hardwood piece of wood there. Now I'm going to sharpen this saw more or less how Paul Sellers tells us to do it using a, a bastard file and a three square file or a saw, hand saw file. He talks a lot about keeping your... Uh... What a colossal waste of time for me to tell you what Paul Sellers talks about. His video is way better than mine. The link's below. We start first 
by flattening all the teeth by running this bastard file along the length of this, keeping it as level as possible. I think he said one pass, but this is a pretty beat up saw, so I gave it two. That gives you a shiny point on the tip of the teeth, which honestly I'm not even seeing yet, so I'm going for a third. You know, I never really did see a shiny spot on the top of each tooth like Paul Sellers talks about in his video. Maybe it's because my files are really old, but I ended up doing a dozen passes with the bastard file. Alright, well I'm going to call that good. Also, this cheap saw has a funny burr on the back side of half of the teeth. Every other tooth has a funny burr on one side. I have no idea what that is, but I'm going to try and take that out. A burr on the back side of the tooth could only be creating more friction for you and getting you a less accurate cut, so I'm going to take this file along the back side here to take that burr out, as many passes as it takes. Well, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better. Okay, so now that I've got, hopefully, uh, a level set of teeth all the way across, I'm going to start with my file here, starting with the top of it, totally uh, level with the teeth, as, mu as much as my hand can hold it, and I'll do two strokes on each tooth for four teeth. sharpening this saw and then uh, we'll get back and see how long it takes me to rip that same 20 centimeters in a board a second time. Okay so I went I went through the whole saw like Paul says to angling the file like he says to and I just did two strokes each time. I think it could use more than that, but I'm just going to do what he said. He said his teeth felt like little pin pricks. These are not so much pin pricks, but we'll see. But it does look better than it did. The other thing you need to do is set the teeth. He has a saw set that he dials in and clips it and stuff. I don't have that. It's probably a sin, but uh, I'm going to use a Leatherman and just try to do my best to, to flare the teeth out to each side very gently. Um, to increase the kerf that my saw is cutting in uh, to make the stroke of the saw easier. Alright, so here I go. Okay, so I did it. I don't know if it made a huge difference, but uh, yeah, I followed the steps to the best of my ability. He also talks about uh, filing the back of the tooth a little bit, kind of like a second, secondary bevel. But I don't have the tool to do that, so can't do it this time. All right, let's get to that rip cut and see how she does. All right, with my newly sharpened, amazing Peugeot saw, We'll see what kind of results we get. Pastellos, do your worst. It now occurs to me that ripping two and a third inch mahogany with a handsaw 
isn't really practical. Done. Whew. We'll get those times. The saw felt easier to use the second time, so that makes me think we got a positive result out of a new saw sharpening. But I'll tell you what, my goodness, if you're determined to work with hand tools, it'll motivate you to sharpen things in a hurry. <laughs> so learn how, to sh learn how to sharpen. Also, what I didn't do, I didn't, uh, Paul Sellers highly recommends putting some 3-in-1 oil on that, which I didn't do because I was just in a hurry to get it done. But if it makes as much a difference as it did when I used it on a hand plane, it's nothing short of pure magic. So I'll try that next time. I'm sure it'll keep me uh, from being so winded after sawing a piece of lumber. Whew! Signing off for this time. Hi to my brother. Thanks to my older kids who watched all the little kids and my wife who ran the cameras. Bye.